Welcome. This is Bruce Knows, and today I'm driving a Tesla Model 3 2021. Now, if you're a Tesla fanboy, brace yourself because this is not the love fest that you expect. This is a reality check. And if you're a regular person who's just curious what all the hoopla is about with Teslas, this is a review for you. Let's do it. Oh! exciting driving a Tesla for the very first time I know right 2022 so just joining <laughs> just joining the modern world here this model 3 is a base model it doesn't come with uh, the extended range batteries and it's not a performance car but even as a base model let me tell you this thing is is no stripper model this is a $45,000 car it has really every convenience that you would expect of a car of that price things like you know really big screen huge screen uh, it's comfortable it's got nice uh, leatherette seating power seats powered opening front and rear trunks power uh, adjustable steering it you know it's really well loaded on top of that it goes bonkers fast first impressions are that it's very minimalist all the controls are in the screen which is awesome uh, in terms of keeping it look neat looking neat it's not going to look so dated in a couple of years because the screen they can keep updating it the interior feels very airy the whole roof is a big glass piece it feels really good inside it's just really like a, a spacious uh interior considering it's a compact car that's you know it, it, it's an accomplishment i would say the one thing i've noticed that i don't think i've ever noticed in any car is that there's a little bit of an echo going on in here because of the shape of the of the glass and how it's inset it's making the the sound echo a little bit um that's unusual <laughs> But, and, and I don't know who's, who, who would notice that except this guy. This guy is sensitive to architecture and interior environments. Initial thoughts with the screen is that, you know, you have to get it through the, go through the screen to do things like opening up the glove box door, turning on the lights, adjusting the air conditioning, adjusting the stereo, obviously the navigation. There is no buttons for any of that. Um, once you're in stereo, you can adjust, you can use a little scrolly thing. He's on the wheel to go up and down in volume and whatnot. So, and also, for example, if you want to adjust the mirrors, you tell it mirror, and then you scroll up and down the wheel, and that adjusts the, the mirrors. So it's pretty slick in operation. I'm not gonna lie. The air conditioning, anything you want to do with it, you're constantly in the screen. So it, it, that's kind of an annoyance. The infotainment screen is the best uh, of any car I've ever seen. It, it's not just that it's quick to react, but the colors are really sharp. The logic behind the organization is, is excellent. Now, being an electric car, it, it, it just has a, a very interesting um, experience. Like you walk up to the car and the car is already on, essentially. You sit in, you sit down, you close the door and, and you just go. And then when you arrive, when you stop to get out and shut it down, you, you don't really shut it down. You just get out of the car, lock it. And you know, the air conditioning, and everything is going until you lock it and then it stops. There's also no creeping forward. When you're in a red light, um, you don't have to press on the brake pedal because the car just stays. Even if there's like a slight incline, the car just stays without you having to press the brake pedal. In fact, you don't have to use a brake pedal for most of the daily driving. You're just driving around and when you let off the accelerator, the brake lights go on because the car is slowing down faster than a regular car. And that's because it's regenerating the braking energy uh, to use it for acceleration later. So the stop and go commute is really, really comfortable. On top of that, I got to talk about the interior. The materials, the quality is what you would expect a $45,000 car 
The leatherette seating is nice. The seats are comfortable. They're powered. They're heated. It's got wireless charge pads. And I got to say the wireless, even if your phone is in a, in a protective case, it still charges, which is really cool. I like the air conditioning. It It's it's an electric car, but to allay your fears, the car doesn't have a motor, so it, it, but the air conditioner is always working. And you can adjust the direction on the screen. That is so cool. The, the air conditioner is well, well capable of keeping this car cold. You can be standing 20 minutes in a standstill. The air conditioner is still going like if nothing ever happened, except the car is eerily quiet. This roof that's completely a glass panel, it's tinted really well, but it's not really giving you a problem with glare and it's not roasting you in the car and what what do you get for that is just this incredible airy feeling cabin with a very low dashboard remember there's no engine in front so they can put the dashboard as as low as as they as they want so the the ambiance is is just very simplistic in design and the cowl is really low the window sills are very low it feels very air, airy in here plus you know for a forty five thousand dollar car the entire roof is is glass so it's just really nice in here driving this thing around it, you know you're looking at a, a four-door compact sedan not unlike the size of like a lexus is or even like a honda civic but then you accelerate and like a pow it's like uh it, the the amount of torque that's available immediately is several notches about what you would expect from a sedan a regular sedan and the like it, it's just so fast but it, it's also lacks personality there's no noise to it it just kind of has this little electrical engine wear, very subtle, but it's so quiet that it just doesn't have that personality that an internal combustion engine would give you where it would be like, you know, the noise and the vibrations and the sensation of, of things happening. You don't get that here. It's just, it's like a automaton. It's, I don't know, man. It's like, it's like Chuck Norris in a gimp suit. There's no personality, it just, forges ahead with power <laughs> and it can't act much like Chuck Norris <laughs> but seriously it, it lacks a personality so you're buying a sedan that has this other side that's just ridiculous all right so here's the driving impressions of the Model 3 this one is being a base model <laughs> believe it or not this thing accelerates 0 to 60 in like four seconds not only is it practical size it's got an extremely short turning radius and uh, the front and rear trunks huge storage it's a quiet car doesn't have a an engine so around town it's very quiet the thing is that it does all that and then it just accelerates stupid fast you know you got to wrap your head around that you know the driving experience for the lack of personality that it has it's very competent the suspension um, and the comfort are really 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 good the handling is insane it just because of the low center of gravity afforded by those that battery pack under the floor it just clings so here's a hard part to pigeonhole you have a sedan that's four doors three box it's it's a good commuter but then it just goes extremely fast which is beyond what you would expect of a car like this so you're getting something extra than you would for that money for a regular car but they're also taking something away there's no free lunch here this car i've been using it for a day i put about 100 miles on it and i went the charge went from 80 percent down to like 15 percent in one day less than 100 miles that's just not right that is not good enough for a commuter car that means that you're going to get range anxiety when you talk about a regular car you know you can run it down to below the empty but you know that the very first gas station you run into boom problem solved you're, you're filling it up with a Tesla, that's not the case. If you run out of juice, it's not like you're gonna run a electrical extension cord to the nearest to the nearest McDonald's. That doesn't work out like that. If you run out of power in a Tesla, you're calling a tow truck. You're getting this extreme power, but at the same time, it's not very usable. You know, and that and that's the the hard part to pigeonhole about the car. So the likes, essentially, it's you know the the, the likes or the infotainment system is 
the best in the market. The car is, you know, it's comfortable, it's quiet for a $45,000 sedan, very convenient. It's a, you know, it's, a, it's an experience, it's an experience. Mm -hmm. The styling after four years, it still looks good. And, you know, the interior ambiance is, is excellent. Things that I love are, you know, that acceleration is really incredible. I gotta say, I also have to say with this likes is there's something missing in the experience. I don't know, it, it, it's sterile. It's a sterile experience. Another thing is the, the range. This is a regular range and, you know, you might not drive a car more than 50 miles a day, but by the time the night comes, you gotta be thinking where you're gonna charge it because you don't know the next day. The next day you need, <laughs> you might need it for a hundred miles and then you're shit out of luck. So the problem here is that you're constantly looking at the battery percentage and thinking, when am I gonna charge it? When am I gonna charge it? It's a daily inconvenience. This is not a good proposition for people who rely on their car unless you own your house and you have a charger and you can plug it in at night. But guess what? What if you show up at night and you're carrying your kid to bed and then you went and you took a shower and then you remember that you forgot to plug the damn car in because your hands were full. So now you gotta go out in the snow and, and charge the car. Man, that, there's gonna be times when you're not gonna wanna do that. That's a problem. Uh, other than that, there's not much to not like the the, the brakes. I don't think they're up to par. Past 100, the, the car does not inspire confidence. It's not there. This is not at the level of handling and high speed stability of, of the European cars. But Tesla's gonna get there because this is a fantastic effort for a, you know a company that's only like a decade old. So in closing, this is a great car. This is not an awesome car. It's uh, it's not a car for enthusiasts, I think. It's a car for people who just want a commuter and and a cool experience, and it, it does deliver that. I would recommend the car if you want to get it with uh, extended range. I would not recommend the car with the regular, how it comes to base model like this one because you don't want to be dealing with that charging everyday situation. That's too much, but that's it. I hope you enjoyed this review of the Tesla Model 3 and stay tuned because I got more reviews coming very shortly of some very awesome cars. So thank you.